Hey, beautiful friends. We are back with another episode of the Robin Graham show. And I have a question for you. Are you a leader? Do you see yourself as a leader in your area of expertise or your niche? It's funny because you hear a lot of times that entrepreneurs are leaders. And if you think like an entrepreneur in the corporate world, you are more likely to be seen as a leader. However, I am discovering that a lot of entrepreneurs don't see themselves as leaders because they're just in the grind, they're doing all the things, and they're not seeing themselves as someone that's leading. They don't have a big team, especially solopreneurs. Well, we're going to talk about that today. We're going to dive somewhat deeply into that, how you can kind of shift your mindset around seeing yourself as a leader, but not in the way that you probably are thinking. We're not going to give you a list of qualities that leaders have. We're actually going to talk about little things you can do on the daily to build yourself up in your own mind, in your own life as the leader that you really truly are based on all of your life experiences and the journey that has gotten you right to where you are today. So I am now going to bring on Shay Smith to the Robin Graham show. Shay, welcome. Thank you so much. I'm so excited to be here. We were just having such a delightful conversation. And then I was like, we have to record. So we had to stop our conversation about TV shows and movies and the fact that you were a former producer and all of that fun stuff. But I would love for you to tell the listeners a little bit about your backstory of how you got to where you are today as a leadership expert and someone who helps women and entrepreneurs discover themselves as leaders. Wonderful. Absolutely. My name is Shay, as you mentioned, and I was a TV producer for gosh, almost 10 years and worked in the story team and was kind of in a middle ground uh, middle management space where I had a little team underneath me, but I still reported to plenty of people. And I saw women really not owning their leadership in this particular industry. And I thought maybe it was unique to that. And then when I moved into the entrepreneurial world and have coached hundreds of women at this point, I've seen that it goes through and through that so much um, we see women not being able to own their leadership role because they did not expect to be in a leadership role especially jumping into the entrepreneurial world. I wasn't um, thinking that I would have a team or really need to be able to lead my business on my own so well. And I felt like I was kind of an accidental leader. And it was when I pulled on my background experiences, my education, I really was able to help own my leadership and then help other women do the same. Mm, I love that. And it not it true how we, when we tap into the experiences that we've had, even all the way from how we were raised and then going through our education and just the journey that every learning opportunity provides to show leadership. Absolutely. It's kind of funny to look back on now because I, I was so nervous about being a leader. and didn't really feel qualified. Yet when I looked at even during school, I was on the student government from the time you could start, which for my grade was third grade, all the way through my senior year of high school. I'd always jumped at leadership role positions and wanted to help others in that capacity. Yet just as life grew on and more doubt and insecurity and just the push to go forward, um, I really had forgotten a lot of my experience along the way. Oh gosh. I love that you just brought that in to play the doubt and insecurity lack of confidence, all of those things totally skew our perspective of ourselves. And I think when we feel doubt and insecurity, a lack of confidence, then our clients, our teams aren't going to have confidence in us. And those are good, I think, qualities of confidence is a good quality in a leader. Um, And I think, but I don't want to confine that people to the, to the thought that you have to be confident to be a leader, because I don't think that's the case. I think a lot of times if you're not confident, you still have other assets that allow you to be a leader. I think having confidence makes it a little bit easier to be a leader. Does that make sense? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. And I totally agree. It shouldn't just be like, if you're not confident, then you're not a leader because we wake up in all sorts of different moods, right? And that's okay. We are human. And that's the important part of this, right? But I think it's about having an accurate perception of yourself, which 
if you are a solo opener, that is really tough to do. If you do not have a team or anyone around you, that is tough to do on a daily basis, right? But knowing um, and working and focusing on yourself is oftentimes not what is talked about as a leader because it's so much of like, um, I'm going to work on my team. I'm going to encourage them or support them or get what they need. But really the best thing that you can do is model what a healthy business person looks like because that is going to serve your team. That's how you lead your team. So if you're not feeling confident, if you have some doubts or insecurities, it's okay at times to communicate that you do not have to be infallible or perfect. Right. And that's, I think that vulnerability is where, um, the leadership really excels. Mm, I love that. And you know what, I think the more vulnerable we are and, you know, we hear more and more about vulnerability nowadays than we ever did, you know, when I was younger growing up or even in college and, and a young adult and a young parent, um, you know, you were, maybe you had a bad day with your kids and you felt like the worst mom in the world. You weren't going to tell anybody that, you know, those were things you didn't talk about. But I think the more we accept vulnerability, the, the stronger we are, the, the more we grow and the more we're able to lead because nobody's perfect. But if we're trying to put off that perception that we're perfect and we're trying so hard to strive for that. We're doing nothing but internally beating ourselves up because it's impossible to achieve it. Right. Absolutely. I think if someone needs help with that, you know, think of, you know, it's easy for people to say like, oh, good leaders need to delegate. Right. So in your own mind, delegate that in that perfection to someone else. Someone else needs to be perfect, not me. Right. And that's not what a leader is leading. Leading essentially is being the point person. Right. And that's okay to point them to other resources or point yourself to other resources, delegate things off your table, right. Off your to do list. And that's all part of it. Not caring things that aren't for you is going to be how you can continue to move forward and be at a, a capacity physically and mentally to lead. You have to take care of yourself as a leader. Otherwise you won't be there to lead them anymore. I think another myth about leadership is that you have to be high up, so to speak. Mm -hmm. You have to be on a pedestal. You have to be speaking on big stages. You have to have written a book. You have to, you know, be, have a team of whatever. I, I think there's a lot of misconceptions about what true leadership is. Would you agree with that? Oh, absolutely. You can lead from right where you are. And even if you are someone who is listening to this, you have a business or you want to have a business someday and you are buried under laundries and diapers, you can lead your home. You can lead from wherever you are. It is about having that mindset shift of owning your leadership authority right where you are and recognizing that it's not where you're going to be forever. If you want that really, really high title, that's okay too, but you can lead well from right where you are. And in fact, it's going to make you even better of a leader once you get to that high, high title, because you will have been practicing it and you will have honed your skills as a leader by the time you have, say, a large team or a large um, portfolio that you're managing, whatever that looks like for you. Mm, I love that so much. So let's talk about that. How do we grow into being a leader or how do we grow into seeing ourselves as a leader? And I I mean, obviously I know like the conversation we had before the, we hit record, but I think it's, it's so important to recognize this and to help other people recognize this. And I think we can do this ourselves, but we can also encourage our teams to do this or our families to do this. And as a mom, you know, when we were talking before and you were talking about celebrating those little tiny things along the way, that is something that it's almost like you're, when you are a leader, you're also a cheerleader. You're, you know, you are the, the support you're the, you're holding it all together. So to speak, and some, you know, we talk about leadership qualities and empathy and compassion and all of those things, but we often forget about those things when we're in the trenches. So let's talk about like that, that strategy that you are using with your clients to help them see their own leadership role and understand how the, how they're a leader or how, how they're becoming leaders. Absolutely. I think the most underutilized tool in business for entrepreneurs, especially is celebration, celebrate, 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 celebrate. And I think the reason for that is that we are always striving, especially if you're building your own business, right? You have this big mountaintop goal that you want. You want your life to look like a certain way. Maybe you've done a five-year, 10-year plan. That is all fantastic. But what happens 
is like you said, you get going and you get in the trenches and it starts to feel like you're not getting anywhere. And if you keep only waiting till you get to the top of that mountain to truly celebrate and recognize what you've done and how much you've grown, you're going to be exhausted and maybe slow down your pace and not even get there. Right. And so I like to use with my clients, what I call the staircase method method, the staircase method. And what that looks like is instead of just trying to walk up a big steep mountain and down the other side, which is really, really hard to do. I want you to think of building a little staircase. And so whether you choose to do this on a weekly, a daily, maybe even just monthly or quarterly basis, I want you to take a look back at the last, let's say week, for example, and write down all of the wins that you had in your business. Now, before you say, I don't have any wins, I want you to really think about what is different today than it was last week at this time, right? Maybe it simply is that you are still open for business. And if you aren't celebrating that every single day, that is a huge win that needs to be celebrated. And what happens with this, instead of just feeling like, you know, you're trying to jump up to the top of this mountain, you're going to start recognizing that the needle is moving forward in your business and your life. And that my friends is really the big motivation that builds uh, momentum over time. So you can continue to keep going. And so if you have something come sideways at you, which we know, we never know what's coming around the corner in life, right? Um, It's not going to take you all the way down at best. At worst, it's going to take you down a step, right? But you already know that there's growth under your feet. This big, strong foundation is, is building underneath you. And that is what it takes to continue to get up and stay up upright in a leadership position. Because if you were trying to just expel all your energy, being like, I'm going to be a leader today, it's not going to work because it's not going to feel authentic and it's not going to be sustainable. Right. So putting these small celebrations in place will really help fuel your fire. I promise. Just try it. (laughs) Hmm, I love that. And something that you touched on is you know, recognizing something good that happens every single day. And some days it is hard to see that. I, I know I've been there, you know, especially when my kids were younger and I was trying to have a business and all of those things. And my husband's traveling and everything kind of went in a downward spiral, but at the end of the day, and this is where I think, um, a gratitude practice comes into play as well, because Mm -hmm. if you can look at your day and see the positives, then you can celebrate. And there's always, always, always something to celebrate, you know? And I, I kind of joke that if at the end of the day, you're so tired and you're looking back on your day and you feel there's nothing to be grateful for today. I really didn't accomplish anything or whatever. You know what? The pencil that you used today that was sharpened was a blessing. And then you can think to yourself, something so minute, something so small that you can be grateful for. What did you do with that pencil? Did you help your child with homework? Did you write a note to a team member? Did you put something really big on your calendar that you had never expected to get the opportunity to have, like a speaking engagement or a sales call or even an appointment with someone that you weren't anticipating you'd ever have an appointment with? So there's little teeny tiny things that can lead you to those moments of celebration if you take that time at the end of each day to practice gratitude. You're always going to see how life is interwoven, right? Even amongst all the chaos and the negative things, there's always, always, always something to celebrate. Oh, absolutely. And I would even go as far as saying, look, if I had five sales calls this month and they all were ended up being no's and didn't purchase the product, instead of just being disappointed, because that didn't feel like I thought it was going to, right? I can celebrate that I chose to ask five people, or I was able to meet with five people to offer a product or service, right? And that's tough to do. If you're, if you're building a business, it's hard to reach out to people. It's hard to get new leads. It's hard to follow through on those conversations, but it brings it back to being an effort-based goal versus it being just a results-based issue. Because then if we're constantly in this state of, well, it's not working, it's not working, it's not working. Um, I'm, I'm just failing at this. You're going to get exhausted and you're not going to want to lead. You're not going to want to continue your business. And that's not what we need. We need you to be running your business and your teams and we, and we need you to be healthy doing it. Absolutely. And, you know, I want to tack on to that, the concept of the sales call. Someone chose to give you 30, 45, 60 minutes of their time. So they see Mm -hmm. you as someone worth their time, someone who's going to provide value, whether they hire you or not. And if you showed up to serve them, that's huge. That's something to celebrate. Absolutely. And as you're talking that, and then even to be able to receive that phone call, they, like you said, they chose to do that, which they didn't have to, no one's doing anything with their free time that they don't want to right now. Right. But then you all have everything that you've built around it to be in a position to have that call, which again, goes back to being a leader without realizing it most of the time, you know, you've done the work, 
putting in all your structures and your logistics to be able to host a sales call and offer them something, right? And you've mm-hmm. positioned yourself as a leader. So it comes back to having that mindset and position of, I am a leader. I am doing this. Yes, I can get better. Yes, I can get a different title. But right now, from right where I am, I am qualified to speak to this person about this issue. Mm-hmm. And that's something to celebrate. And if you have as, as an entrepreneur, and this is something that I work with my clients on too, you know, before you do anything else, before you do the sales calls, before you start doing PR, you really need to have your processes in place. Because if you have that sales call, you need to have an onboarding process. You need to be able to bring them on smoothly so that they know that, okay, she meet, she's really, she means business. She is, she's smart. She's got it together. She made this so seamless for me that I'm going to recommend her to other people. And I think it's really important to recognize that, that if you have either invested in those tools or systems, you've had help setting them up, you could afford them, whatever the case may be, even if they're free systems, if you have had the wherewithal to get those processes in place so that you can have a, you know, a, a, an efficient sales call, whether they purchase from you or not, that's something to celebrate. Absolutely. Absolutely. Without a doubt. And I think, I mean, even just having you walk through that, it is, there's so much that goes into this, right. And building your business is not for the faint of heart. And yet I think what comes up often is if you're in a position where you're building, you're growing and you're scaling, whatever part of your journey you're on, oftentimes as entrepreneurs, we're looking to other people, right. We're investing in training for ourselves and we're getting in the mastermind and all this stuff. And it's great to be around people that are at that next level but if you're not practicing celebration and if you're not paying attention to where you are now than from where you started, there's going, that gap is going to feel bigger and bigger. It's going to feel like you're not getting wherever there is quote unquote for you. Right. Mm-hmm. And so celebrate where you are and how much you have become a leader and an expert in your position already and still work towards all those wonderful people that you're getting training from. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. One, 100%. Absolutely. So what do you say to somebody, Shay, who is listening to this and they're, they're thinking, well, everybody online is making six figures and I'm not making six figures. I don't even, I only have one client. How can I celebrate? What do you say to them? I would say, first of all, you don't know what other people are actually making. (laughs) You never know the story. If I would have believed that when I started almost 10 years ago, I wish I could go back and tell my, my, my younger self that believe that you never know what other people's stories are, whether they made that or, or which is wonderful if they did, but you also don't know how long it took, what infrastructure they have, what team they have, what their business prior to this was. Cause remember a lot of entrepreneurs, this isn't their first business because we, um, you know, try things and it doesn't work out and you try something else. So just, just go easy on yourself. I see other people having success and use it as a reminder, one to celebrate them, whether I know them or not, and actually reach out to them. I say out loud, you go girl, you've got this going. Thank you for the reminder that I can do this too. It's possible for me to do this too. So I start there because if not, then the bitterness forms, right? Mm -hmm. (laughs) Where it's like, why am I not here? Yes. And I think that's the downside. Oh, sorry. I totally interrupted you. Go ahead. Oh no, that's okay. But I just, and then it was connecting back to what you're saying. Cause then you, what am I going to be grateful for? Okay. I'm going to have this gratitude yeah. journal, but I'm everybody else is awesome. And I'm not, cause that's not the truth. You're just not there yet. And you're going to be that for somebody else. So know that too. Um, yes. and then I would celebrate if you're saying, Oh, I only have one client. Great. You have one client. A lot of people start businesses and don't get any clients and then they stop. Right. Mm-hmm. So that's a big deal. And then you're looking at that client. Are they sticking with you? Are they going through the program? Are they, you know, meeting with you on your coaching calls, whatever the, solution to their problem is that you offer, is it going well? Okay. Could I do that for two people? Because I'm going to be honest, if you can, you can't do it for one or two people, you're not ready for 10,000 clients. You don't want that yet. Right. Cause that overnight success that people long for, if you're not ready with your, you know, your systems and your structure. And like you said, having the onboarding system and everything, if you're not ready for it, it's not going to work and you're not going to serve them well. And it's not going to feel good for anybody. Right. So mm-hmm. take this time. It's a huge opportunity to build the business that you want now with your one client and see how much fun that is. Cause then you're just, it's a matter of getting more of your clients in there. Right. And getting to enjoy serving them. Well, and I think this loops into a couple of different things. One, I want to mention that I did a blog post on the word yet, and I am going to link that in the show notes for everybody to go read that because I think it's something that is so incredibly important that you may only have one client, 
right now, but that doesn't mean that's all you're going to have. More will come in the future if you lay that foundation for your business. So I'm going to link that in the show notes. But the other thing I wanted to mention too, is a lot of times, if you're spending a lot of time on social media, you're going to see that bro marketing. You're going to see, I made six figures. I had a 50K month. I'm, I'm on track for a million dollars this year. You don't know where that person began. You don't know what their resources are. You don't know the size of their team. You have no idea what their packages are. And, you know, maybe they're charging $100,000 for one consultation. It depends on the space they're in and where they came from and what their network is. So don't beat yourself up in that realm of comparison and imposter syndrome. And I'll link episodes that we've done on those topics as well. Because when you, you can't compare yourself to someone else because it's not apples to apples. It's not oranges to oranges. It's, it's like comparing apples to oranges, totally different, right? And each one of our journeys are the same. So it's really important to not focus on what you're seeing online, but focus internally. And this is something that, um, actually I'll link this blog post as well. I just did this. Why, you know, three reasons, this is my opinion, three reasons why entrepreneurs fail. And one of those is um, they're aligning themselves with what they see on social media instead of aligning themselves with their faith and letting God lead them. And I really, truly believe that we get so inundated with what we see online that we lose sight of the fact that God has a calling for us. And he has specific people he wants us to work with. And we get impatient. And impatience, I think, is one of those really big cruxes that affects people and prevents us from being leaders. Because if we rush, we're not going to have the experiences that are going to then lend us to develop the expertise we need to move forward and to grow and to become the leader that we're meant to be. I love that so much. And I can't wait to read the resources that you were just sharing about each one. I was like, oh, I'm going to put that on my list and that on my list because it all is something that we all need to hear all the time. And like you said, there is a specific calling on our, each and every one of our lives and the million dollars and you know all the stats and stuff like that. Like you said, you don't know what their resources are, but you also don't know if they're happy, right? Mm-hmm. You don't know if that is going to be um, something that is going to change your life. Your life has already been changed for a huge, huge reason, right? And to be able to be called to a specific um, type of work with specific clients, I think is a cause for celebration right off the get go, right? That we are chosen to do this work, right? And to then stop and consider like, okay, what am I, what goals am I chasing after? Like what is behind the, I need 10 K months or $50,000 or a hundred million dollars, whatever the price point is that is causing you to feel less than, um, and that you're not being provided for and look at what's behind it. And that is something that I have to do time and time again. Cause like you said, in this industry, in this world, we see it a lot, whether we want to or not. And I feel like that's where a lot of attack can come being vulnerable and being like, I'm not there yet. So maybe God's not providing, maybe I'm not supposed to be doing this. Like you said, um, any encouragement around the patience aspect of it, because it's not in our timing, which is both incredible and so frustrating as a human. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is, it is so much greater than we know. Right. Mm-hmm. And we just haven't seen it yet. Yes. Oh, I love that word. And I think it's, it's, it's so important to recognize that each gift that we have is something to celebrate. And sometimes we don't see our own gifts until someone else points them out. And maybe that discovery call that the person said no on, but you absolutely transform their life just from being on that call with them is an indication then back to you of, oh my gosh, I have that gift. That's what God's telling me to do. So I think if we have a closed mind and we're only looking at, oh, that was a fail. I didn't get that client. Now I'm a loser. Now I'm never going to get to this dollar amount goal. You know, if you're spinning in that direction, really stop, you know, and I, I've got my five C's journaling method that I talk about all the time because it's in my book, but it's catch those negative thoughts and challenge them. What is the, what is the reality to those statements? There's none because every single one of those experiences is a learning opportunity. And now you, when you catch those thoughts, you can change them to, okay, I just learned a big lesson there. And now my eyes are opened to how I can truly serve or how I can make a difference for somebody else's life. And 
maybe that becomes a blog post. Maybe that becomes a social media post. Maybe that becomes now the foundation of your message because you just heard the voice of customer that you hadn't heard before. So there's, I just, I love this so much because I think there's so much to be said. Celebrating those little things, even the negative experiences can be turned into a positive learning experience. So as you guys go through, you know, each and every day of your business, take these opportunities to, to not only feel grateful, but to celebrate them. And it's something that I wasn't good at. And now it's like, oh my gosh, I just did that. Oh my gosh. I said that that was like the bomb, you know, you, you really can start to change your, your own perspective. And as you're building a personal brand, think about that because you're creating the perception you want other people to have of you. So if you're a Debbie Downer and you're sitting there focusing on all these negative things, how are you going to lead other people to reach their goals, especially as a coach? So really think about that. What perception are you creating in your own being that is then projecting onto what, how other people are going to perceive you? I love that so much. And like you said, it, it kind of becomes a habit, right? Like I wasn't good at it either. And then to, again, it just practice that and practice gratitude. I used to think, ah, whatever, I'll get to that later, but it does. And you start seeing it and then it gets exciting. Like, Oh, I'm great, great at that. Or I am grateful for this. And I would, if you're listening to this right now and you're like, no, but seriously, you don't know my story. You don't know where I am. I'm just, I don't want to be a down, Debbie Downer. Call your best friend, call someone in your family that you trust tell them that you don't have anything to celebrate. Tell them that you don't have any skills worth sharing. Tell them you can't help anybody and see what their reaction is, right? Because we know it's so much easier for us to encourage other people. It's so easy to see that in other women, right? And if you, um, you know, if you've ever had a negative thought, like, oh, she's so this and I'm not this, like you already, you see things in other people, right? Which is human nature, right? And so mm -hmm. call me if you want, I will tell you, I will give you a word any day of the week because you are doing it. You are going and growing and it's going to be great. Um, just hang in there. You've got this. You've got it. You absolutely have it. I have the utmost faith that God is leading you on a path that you are going to have a positive impact. And at the end of the day, when we believe in ourselves, then we're going to trust that God's calling us. And we're going to take that action one step at a time to be able to create that ripple effect of good in the world. And listen, if you are sitting in that place and you, you truly have no clarity on what your gifts are and what you, what God's calling you to do, get on a discovery call with Shay or I, I'll put the links to our calendars for our, oh, well, it's Shay, I'm speaking for you. I better double check that sure. that's okay with you, but <laughs> that's uh, totally I'll fine. definitely put the link for me. Get on a discovery call with me. I'm not going to try to sell you, but let's, let's dive into what is your biggest struggle and what's holding you back? Because if it is these thoughts that are holding you back where you can't find anything to celebrate about yourself, but yet you have this on your heart to start a business, Let's get to the bottom of that so that you can achieve those goals. And most importantly, have the impact that God's calling you to have. Okay, Shay, with that, this has been so powerful. Like, I love this conversation so, so I much. Do. So um, any last second things you want to tell the listeners? I just want to encourage, I mean, it was just going off. I loved what you just said of, you know, getting refocused, getting realigned. And it's okay to slow down and be like, hey, I don't know what I'm doing, but I know I need to do this. That is okay. I feel like I've done that so much in my business. I love that you just opened up that space for them to come and have a safety net to do that in a, in a really, like I said, safe space to be able to figure it out. Because if you're feeling that pull and that gut, just go with that and, and dig into it. Yeah. I love that. Absolutely. Follow that intuition, right? God, God's putting mm -hmm. it there for some reason or another, yeah, the Holy Spirit's absolutely. whispering in your ear, tapping you on the heart, yeah. whatever. Um, okay. Shay, how can the listeners follow you, connect with you, learn more from you, all that good stuff? I would absolutely love to connect. Um, theshaysmith.com is my website with a lot of good resources. Um, I'm over on Instagram at the Shea Smith. It's S-H-E-A, like Shea Butter. So Shea Smith. Um, come send me a DM. I want to know what you're celebrating. I want to know that you um, got something out of this and, uh, and or feel free to ask for encouragement because I know that that can be kind of awkward to get into the groove of celebrating. So just know that I'm here for you. I often do a weekly wins on my Instagram so that, um, again, it gets that space to get, get in that habit of celebrating because I already think you're awesome. I'm your biggest fan, biggest cheerleader. And I'm just so thankful to have had this time. Um, if you are someone that is just feeling like you're really struggling to show up consistently, because I know often as a leader, there's so much on your plate. Um, I do have a free training for you that um, can also be in the show notes if you'd like um, mm -hmm. to how to show up consistently in an inconsistent world. Because 
if you're anything like us, like it's exhausting running a business during so many uncertain times. And so it's, there's a lot of good um, support in that training as well. Mm, I love it. And I will put the links to all of that in the show notes so that it's so easy for you guys. So I encourage you, anyone listening to head over to the show notes, because there's going to be a plethora of links in there to learn more and dive deeper into celebrating yourself and finding more information that is going to help you grow as the leader that you're meant to be. And if you know anyone who is struggling with any of the things, concepts that we talked about today, please share the episode with them. Let's share the light. Let's spread the word. Let's help other people. Let's build each other up and create that ripple effect of good in the world. So listeners, thank you so much for being here and I will see you next week.